Hi everyone, today we will be discussing interpreting our complete blood count results. So what is the complete blood count? This is the most commonly ordered test by clinicians and it involves a variety of parameters which range from your red blood cells, white blood cells, as well as your platelets. And this provides information about the hematopoietic system as well as other organ systems that might contribute to abnormal CBC results. As such, this provides valuable information about the patient's health status. Interpreting our CBC results can occur in two phases. In the first phase, numbers and descriptions generated by testing are summarized using appropriate terminology. Here, we compare the patient's values with reference intervals. In phase two, we recognize patterns of results consistent with various diseases. This helps us narrow down or pinpoint the diagnosis for the given patient. In this presentation, we will be focusing more on phase one. In phase one, we mainly examine three parameters. Let's first examine our different WBC parameters. On the slide, you can see the various parameters and the reference values in conventional units and SI units. For your WBC count, your reference values are 3.6 to 10.6 times 10 to the third cells per microliter, while for SI unit, you have 3.6 to 10.6 times 10 to the ninth cells per liter. Meanwhile, for the relative counts, I will be giving the conventional units. For neutrophils, we have 50 to 70 percent, lymphocytes 18 to 42 percent, monocytes 2 to 11 percent, eosinophils at 1 to 3 percent, and basophils at 0 to 2 percent. Meanwhile, for your absolute counts, you have neutrophils at 1.7 to 7.5 times 10 to the third cells per microliter, lymphocytes at 1 to 3.2 times 10 to the third cells per microliter, monocytes at 0.1 to 1.3 times 10 to the third power cells per microliter, eosinophils are at 0 to 0 0.3, and basophils at 0 to 0 0.2 times 10 to the third cells per microliter. Meanwhile, for the SI units, the values are the same, but this time, the unit is 10 to the ninth cells per liter. Some things to consider when evaluating our WBC parameters are the presence of nucleated RBCs. This can give falsely elevated WBC counts. When you are doing your peripheral blood smear evaluation and you notice the presence of these nucleated RBCs, you have to correct your WBC count accordingly. In addition, you have to consider the presence of young cells, for example, uh, band neutrophils being the most common one. These should be included when determining the relative and absolute counts. So for example, if you have a neutrophil relative count of 50% and a band neutrophil count of 10%, when considering the entire parameters, you have to add both of them which means that your neutrophil relative count would be 60%. For other white blood cell types, young lymphocytic or monocytic cells should be reported at their different stages. For example, pro-lymphocytes, lymphoblasts, pro-monocytes, or monoblasts. Meanwhile, immature eosinophils and basophils are not usually characterized. They are just called immature eosinophils or basophils. For neutrophilic cells, there is a unique term that refers to the presence of increased number of band or cells younger than bands in the peripheral blood. This is known as your left shift or your shift to the left. Lastly, you have to report any WBC cell inclusions observed, as this may indicate various pathologic causes. Let's now take a look at the different terminologies related to our WBC parameters. For your WBC count, an increase is called leukocytosis, while a decrease is called leukopenia. For your neutrophils, an increase is called neutrophilia, while your decrease is called neutropenia. Meanwhile, for your lymphocytes, an increase is called lymphocytosis, and a decrease is called lymphopenia or lymphocytopenia. For your monocytes, an increase is referred to as monocytosis, while a decrease 
is considered to be monocytopenia. Meanwhile, for eosinophils and basophils, an increase is called eosinophilia and basophilia respectively. Now let's move on to our RBC parameters. Here we have the first set of parameters. Your RBC count for males have a reference value of 4.2 to 6.0 times 10 to the 6 cells per microliter, while for females you have the reference value of 3.8 to 5.2 times 10 to the 6 cells per microliter. Meanwhile, in the SI unit, the values are the same except that the unit is now 10 to the 12 cells per liter. For your hemoglobin, in males, the reference value is 13.5 to 18 grams per deciliter, while for your females, you have 12 to 15 grams per deciliter. Meanwhile, in the SI unit, you have 135 to 180 grams per liter for males and 120 to 150 grams per liter for females. Then we have your hematocrit levels which for males are 40 to 54% and for females 35 to 49%. In SI units, it is 0 0.4 to 0 0.54 liter over liter for males and 0 0.35 to 0 0.49 liter over liter for females. Then we also have our MCV or mean cell volume. Our conventional units are 80 to 100 femtoliters and it is the same in SI units. For our MCH, our mean cell hemoglobin, we have a reference value of 26 to 34 picograms. And for our MCHC, or mean cell hemoglobin concentration, we have the reference value of 32 to 36 grams per deciliter. Meanwhile, our RDW, or red cell distribution width, has a reference value of 11.5 to 14.5% while our retix count has a reference value of 20 to 115 times 10 to the third cells per microliter. While for the SI unit, the value is the same, but the unit is 10 to the ninth cells per liter. Our retix count has a reference value of 0.5 to 2.5% in the conventional unit, and an SI unit of 0.005 to 0.025. Meanwhile, our nucleate RBCs should not be present, having a reference value of 0 per 100 WBCs. Let's now take a look at the different terminologies associated with our RBC parameters. First, for our MCV, or mean cell volume, this gives us a picture of how big or how small our red blood cells are. If we have a normal MCV value, we refer to our cells as normocytic. If our MCV is increased, we refer to them as macrocytic, and if it is decreased, we refer to them as microcytic. Meanwhile, for our MCHC, or mean cell hemoglobin concentration, this gives us an idea of how much hemoglobin is in each cell. A normal value indicates that our cells are normochromic, while an increased value indicates that our cells are hypochromic. Meanwhile, a decreased value indicates that they are hypochromic. Then we have RDW. Here, an increased result may indicate an isocytosis. These different terminologies can be used to narrow down or pinpoint our various anemias. Here are some things to consider. When evaluating our RBC parameters, you have to keep in mind the rule of 3, which states that your RBC count multiplied by 3 should be equivalent to your hemoglobin level plus or minus 3, while your hemoglobin level multiplied by 3 should equal your hematocrit level plus or minus 3. Using the rule of 3, we are able to easily pinpoint or detect any abnormalities involving our red blood cells. Then you have to use your different RBC indices to evaluate RBC morphology. If any abnormalities are observed or suspected, a peripheral blood smear should be done and any abnormal RBCs that are seen should be reported accordingly. Finally, we have our platelet parameters. For your platelet count, the reference value should be 150 to 450 times 10 to the third cells per microliter and 150 to 450 times 10 to the sixth cells per liter in the SI unit. 
Meanwhile, your MPV or mean platelet volume should be 7 to 12 femtoliters. For the terminologies associated with our platelet count, an increase is called thrombocytosis, while a decrease is called thrombocytopenia. Meanwhile, if all blood cell types are increased, we call this pancytosis, and if all blood cell types are decreased, we call this pancytopenia. Keep in mind that a markedly decreased platelet count should be followed immediately by a peripheral blood smear. Phenomenons such as platelet satellitism may cause false decreases in platelet counts, especially if they are done by automated cell counters. In these cases, a new blood sample should be collected in a trisodium citrate tube and the automated platelet count should be multiplied by a factor of 1.1. In addition, abnormal MPV results should be followed up with another peripheral blood smear, as this may indicate abnormal platelet sizes. Let's have an example. Using the step-by-step -step approach we just discussed, assess the following CBC results. You can pause the slide here while you figure out the answer. Now let's take a look at our example. Looking at the patient's WBC count, we can see that he has leukopenia or a decreased WBC level. Now although the differential count of the patient indicates normal values, using the relative count, by computing the absolute count, we can tell that the patient has absolute neutropenia and absolute lymphopenia. Meanwhile, taking a look at the RBC parameters, we can tell that the patient is anemic because they have a very low hemoglobin concentration. The increase MCV indicates that the patient's red blood cells are macrocytic or that the patient has microcytosis and the patient also has a normal MCHC, which means that the anemia of the patient can be diagnosed or can be characterized as being macrocytic normochromic anemia, while the RDW indicates that there is substantial anisocytosis. And you can see in the morphology that the patient has Howell jolly bodies and basophilic stiplings which are significant RBC inclusions. And finally, looking at the platelets, the level is 115 times 10 to the 9th cells per liter. This indicates that the patient has thrombocytopenia, or a low platelet count. Okay, to wrap up our discussion, let's take a look at a summary. These steps in complete blood count interpretation were taken from Kiyohain et al. So for white blood cells, we have to ensure that the WBC count is accurate. We can do this by reviewing the WBC histogram or scatter plot. Also, the presence of nucleated RBCs may require correction of our WBC count. We then compare the patient's WBC count with the laboratory's established reference intervals. After, we examine the differential information, both relative and absolute, on the variations of your distribution of WBCs. Then we need to take note of any immature cells in any cell line that should not appear in the normal peripheral blood and we have to take note as well of the different morphologic abnormalities. For your red blood cells, first we examine the hemoglobin concentration to assess the presence of anemia, then we examine the mean cell volume to assess cell volume, followed by the assessment of MCHC to see the hemoglobin concentration in each red blood cell, then we examine the RDW to assess an isocytosis. This should be correlated with the MCV and the RBC histogram. Finally, we examine the morphologic description and correlate these with the numerical values. For platelets, we have to first examine the total platelet count, followed by the examination of mean platelet volume to assess the different volumes of our platelets. And finally, we need to assess our platelet morphology and correlate these with the numerical values. Okay, so if you wanted to learn more about the things we just discussed, make sure to check out this reference. 
Thank you very much for listening and make sure to leave a like if you found this video informative.